What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Darien is Fishing. You can see I've got my camera light set up, got my tripod set up, got my seat ready to do the uh, Q&A that I have been talking about. I actually shot it already with Hannah, but we didn't have any audio for some reason, so I'm going to try it again tonight. Hopefully the audio works and I can answer some questions that you guys have, but I just want to say before I get this started, please do me a huge favor. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. I know you're gonna watch it and hopefully you enjoy it, but please give the video a thumbs up and drop at the end, drop any questions down below that I did not answer today that you might have about me or about Hannah or about anything that we do. Um, I'd love to hear more questions from you guys, but do me a favor, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already, and I would really appreciate it. Without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the questions. Thanks for clicking on this video. Thanks for watching all my other videos. And uh, yeah, remember if you've got any questions for me, drop them down below and uh, I'll get them answered. Jump into this Q&A right now. First question, and I've got a whole list of questions. I just took them, I typed them down. Um, I'm just gonna read them, I'll pop them up on the screen. How to start a YouTube channel. Um, the main thing about starting a YouTube channel is don't be scared, whoever you are, just do it. Just start your channel. If you can bring value to anyone, whether you think it's one person, if you can bring knowledge to anyone, start a YouTube channel. You know, you gotta get a camera, but most of you have a phone. Don't worry about the quality of equipment you've got. Worry about bringing value to people. Second question, how did you and Hannah meet? Well, me and, he, me and Hannah met uh, through my, my friend Houston. Hannah and Houston were working out at the same gym together and Han Houston tried to go on a date with Hannah. Hannah was like, hey, I'm sorry you're too young for me. But Houston's like, hey, I got a buddy who is not too young for you and that was me. That's how we got our introduction. So Houston, thank you. He hooked me up with Hannah. Uh, what exactly is your job outside of YouTube and how do you get to fish so much? That's a great question. I wanted to diversify myself just because like, I don't want to tie money up in, in one thing and it, like, I could only work for TH Marine, but I would be scared, you know, what if things change? What if you got fired? What if they had to lay people off and then I just don't have a job? So I wanted to set myself up where I had money coming from multiple places. I, I, there's a quote and I don't exactly know who said it at one point in time, but I did a job shadow of a, of a uh, financial advisor one time when I thought that's what I wanted to do. And uh, he said that whatever percentage was a huge percent, like 90% of all millionaires have at least five sources of income. And so I always wanted to make that my goal. Like I want to make sure I've got money coming from different places and it doesn't have to be big. It's just the more the support factor of like, I know that you know, if this didn't work and this didn't work, I've got three other things that hopefully are doing decent. So that's kind of where I wanted to go. I'm not necessarily there. I, I do have the outdoors agency, which has, you know, much more than five clients, but anyhow, that's kind of my goal. So, so outside of YouTube, I work for TH Marine full time. I have the outdoors agency, which manages all those social media accounts. I have the tea company, which I'm a partner with my best friend, Brandon. So we both own the tea company and then we're me and Hannah are looking a lot in right now into uh, buying rental properties. So that's one thing I want to get into is just so you don't have money sitting in a savings account, putting money into real estate and then doing VRBO locally, like in Gunnersville. I just think that's something that I, the, the route that I want to go with are like savings money is put it in real estate and then try to make money off of it. So that's that. How do you get to fish so much? Kind of a self-explanatory. I produce content for all of those companies and for TH Marine. And so in that, I just get to fish a lot. I don't have like a regular job. I'm very fortunate, but uh, anyhow, that's that. Um, how old were you when you and Hannah met? It was five years ago. I was, I think I had just turned 21 maybe, or, or had just turned 20. Anyhow, 20 or 21, we've been dating for five years, five, a little over five years actually. Can you explain how the Ranger deal works without losing money? I can't go into exact detail of it, but I can tell you that the way these deals are set up, Ranger is one of my clients. I work for Ranger, I do a lot of content for them, I do a lot of posting for them, but I'm gonna explain how a pro boat deal works. So the angler goes to the boat company or the boat company goes to the angler and says, hey, we want you to run our boat because of all these reasons, we think you can help us sell boats. So we're gonna give you a small percentage off your boat. In return, you help us sell boats. You run a wrap, you post on social media, you do videos for us, you do dealer appearances. You go to all these places and just help us sell boats. So save you a couple thousand dollars. Basically the thousands of dollars that you save is the depreciation of that first year. So a guy, yeah, he might lose a little bit of money in the first year, but 
he got a, he had a discount anyhow, so it's like it kind of catches up to even. So when you sell your boat, you're basically at zero. So then every single year you sell a boat, you're at zero, and you rent a boat for free for a year, a brand new boat, completely loaded out. Different people have different deals. My deal is a little bit different than that. I, I'm not gonna go into detail on it, but if you can turn a boat every single year with a discount, um, you can stay in a new boat every year. But I know you're thinking, well, I'm not a pro. I don't have that opportunity to have that deal, so screw y'all. Well, if you do the opposite, do what I did with Gerald's boat, if you can get to the point where you own, either or financing or whatever, a pro boat, a, a one-year-old pro boat, every single year you sell it, you can basically buy it for whatever the price is. I'm just gonna say 60,000. You buy his boat for 60,000, it already lost depreciation. Like so for example, my boat, but I sold it for 61. The guy who bought my boat can sell it next year for 61. So the majority of the money that you lose is in the first year. That's kind of why they give that discount for the pros so that you can help recover some of that cost. But anyhow, I'm not gonna go into too much detail with that. Hopefully you understand, but for those of you who are wanting to get in a boat, a pro boat is, in my opinion, the best thing to do. Pros have a service crew. Like they have people with them all year long. If they mess anything up, literally it gets fixed instantly. Most of them they're gonna fix the gel coat or the fiberglass if there's any fiberglass problems. Um, and other than that, they're literally, they have a pit crew with them all year long at tournaments to fix the problem. So anyway, I would recommend getting a pro boat. You can normally get them in a good deal. And if financially, if you can support it, you can turn them every year, sell one, sell one, sell one, sell one every year, always stay in a brand new boat. Um, who was your biggest influence growing up? Uh, there's no, I don't think there's like one answer of who was your biggest influence growing up. I think there's several people. I think it takes you know, a group of people to raise a child. And so my mom was a huge influence. My dad's a huge influence. Teaching you right from wrong, spankings, groundings, all that stuff. Parents are the, are the core for that. Just teaching you right from wrong. It's a huge part of life. My papa is a huge part. Gerald Swindle is a huge, huge part of my life. He's just taught me a lot of things. I've learned a lot about, fi a lot about fishing, but more, but much bigger than fishing is just life stuff. And Gerald's a huge person to look up to for me, especially uh, being able to call him with, with personal and real life and even business questions. So I just think there's a lot of influential people in your life if you pay attention as you grow up and you listen to those people, um, you know, they become a big deal in your life. Uh, what's Hannah's biggest fish? Hannah's caught a seven pounder is her biggest. Uh, she has caught a lot of six pounders, a bunch of six pounders. She lost one that was the biggest bass I've ever seen in real life. I, I know it was a 10 pounder or bigger in a tournament. Uh, I'll let her tell that story another time. I wish she could tell the story now, but uh, yeah, seven pounder for Hannah. What or who made me realize that I didn't want to be a pro, but still work in the fishing industry. So honestly, it was just like being real with myself. One, I'm not good at tournaments. Like I love fishing. I enjoy fishing tournaments, but a tournament is a really, really, really stressful thing. You're wired to keep going, wired to keep going. It's very high pace. For me, I like filming YouTube videos now. Like it's much more laid back. I can fish during the week. I can fish when fish are biting and just kind of control what I do. And that's happiness to me. So like I wanted to bring happiness to me and that's to me making YouTube videos makes me happier than fishing a tournament. Honestly, the, I would say the main thing is how frustrating it is. I, just being happy. Like I just, everything I try to do, I try to just do what I can do to be happy. That's my goal is just be happy. Don't, I mean, I complain about whatever and whatever, but I pretty much just try to stay happy. Uh, you're not gonna find happiness in, you found these fish last weekend. I've been wanting to go down there the whole week. I'm knowing in this tournament I got on Saturday coming up, I'm gonna run down there. There's a rock pile, it's got fish on it. I'm gonna catch them, have 20, 25 pounds, and hopefully I have a shot to win. And then I'm gonna run to the other spot I got. It's a rock pile, another rock pile with some with a lay down on it. I'm gonna drag a jig and hopefully I can catch a big one. That's your game plan. Well, there's two boats on the first rock pile and there's five boats close to the second rock pile. And then you run to your grass line and it's all muddy. And it's like, okay, all what I've been thinking about all week has completely changed. And now I'm stuck having to evaluate what to do, make a tournament decision. Hell, I just don't like that to be honest. I would rather realize all that's going on and just go get to fish a, a film a video. Like that, it's just personally what I like better. Um, so that's that. Did Hannah fish before she met you? Yes, Hannah, um, her family has a lake house or like her stepdad's mom has a lake house or parents have a lake house. So she fished a little bit from their dock. They would go up there on the summers or whatever, but she didn't like ever fish tournaments or anything, but she didn't have to have a baitcaster, which was, that's what I was looking for. 
Get you a woman that throws a bait caster. All right, so favorite YouTuber. My favorite YouTuber is actually not in the fishing industry. My favorite YouTuber is Christian Guzman. He's a uh, fitness guy. He owns multiple businesses. He owns money in real estate. He's just a person. He's And he's also, uh, I think he's 29 maybe, so he's four years older than I am. My favorite fishing YouTuber though is Andrew Flair. I think he, uh, yeah, he, he just really, he's super talented. He has, now he's like a million and three, 1.3 million or something, it's crazy. And uh, it's just a super cool dude, does a lot of good stuff. Uh, favorite YouTuber, how do you get sponsors without fishing bigger tournaments? Sponsors in 2019, 2020, they're not only looking for big, bigger tournaments. They're not looking, honestly, you could not even fish tournaments. The main thing about a sponsor is bringing value to other people so that you can sell product for a company for other people. It doesn't matter if you have a boat or not. If, say if you're a good brim fisherman and you fish with a, a, a bobber and a, and a hook and a cricket and there's a company who sells bobbers and hooks and crickets and you're like, hey man, I live in this region of the country. Y'all's bobbers and crickets aren't here anymore or you know, they're, nobody's selling them here. I think I can sell them because I've been crushing them on these bobbers and crickets and, and you prove to them that you can sell them. Well, the bobber and cricket companies will be like, dude, you're doing a great job. You know, we'll give you some product. We might even pay you to keep doing what you're doing, film or do whatever, however you're gonna promote it. You know, social media, uh, if you're in with newspapers or print or however you wanna do it, winning tournaments or whatever. Um, and then how can you sell product? You gotta be in good with tackle stores. You gotta be in good with people who are buying and just be able to sell their product. And so those, a combination of those things was gonna have you be able to get sponsors. Um, did I fish in high school? Yes, I did. I, start, I, I fished all through high school, but I started our, I actually started our high school fishing team uh, my 11th grade year. We won the state championship that year and the next year. And then after I graduated, they won the next two years too. So we had four state championships in a row. Hayden High School, shouts out. I'll put a picture on the screen right here. How to get in the fishing industry. The fishing industry is a very, 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 very tiny industry. All the companies competing or not, they all know each other. Just for an example, if I was trying to get in and I know that social media is huge right now, I would reach out to people who work in the industry and say, hey, how do you do it? How, do, how would you suggest that I get started? I would use social media to get in the industry. I would DM on people on Instagram, on Facebook. I would go to expos, trade shows, anywhere you can shake someone's hand and say, hey, my name is Peter. And, and get to know someone face to face. That's always the best. And then even doing both, DM someone on Instagram, say, hey, my name's Peter. I'm, I'm, you know, I fish in whatever state. I do this and this and this. I'm good at this and this and this. I think I could do this for your company. And by the way, I'm gonna be at ICAST next week. I'd love to meet with you for 10 or 20 minutes if you got time. That's a great way to get in the industry. Um, and just be genuine. If you're a good person, people will figure it out and, and uh, you know, they'll accept you for who you are and, and just figure out what you can do to bring value to someone, what be it a company or a consumer. Um, how can I bring value to someone else? And that's, how you're gonna do well. Any college background, I don't have, I, have, I did like a semester and a half of college. I, I went to a small community college in Birmingham, Alabama called Jeff State Community College. And I did two semesters. College is not necessary, people, trust me. What kind of beer do you prefer? Uh, I like Dos Equis. I like a good Ultra. And recently, I've started drinking some Crown Royale. <laughs> I like Crown now too, Crown and Coke. Um, do you live just on YouTubing or do you have other sources of income? Very great question. I'll answer it at the end of this, but that's a great question. Um, how do we budget? Uh, kind of me and Hannah budget. Um, we live way be below our means. We, um, we both come from families that didn't make a ton of money. So we don't have like a, a money bug. We don't have a spending problem. Hannah doesn't go shopping a ton. Now, I, I mean, she has plenty of money to go do whatever she needs to do. If she ever needs to get anything, she has the freedom to get it as long as like, she's just rational, like just be rational with your money. But um, we, we do budget a little bit. Uh, we know it costs this for us to live. And we make, and we have this much left over. Uh, we're really driven to put money back in savings and, and reinvest money. So that kind of helps us not spend money because we know if we save it, we can invest it. So that's kind of what motivates us to budget, uh, not really spend a ton. But 
uh, just live below your means. What are my sponsors? My actual, so I have a bunch of brands that I work for. Actual sponsors for my YouTube channel are Six Sense, Quantum, and Hook gave me a bunch of clothes this year. Also TH Marine, they're my full-time job. They have a discount code. So the discount codes that I give out, oh, I'm thirsty, hold on. The discount codes that I give out, they're truly for you guys. Like I don't get anything from them. I make a little bit of money on the, uh, the Six Cents Super Six Box if y'all subscribe to it, but it's the best deal you can get on Fishing Tackle. Like it's such a stupid good deal that that's the only reason I'm pushing it to you is because it's actually a really, really freaking good deal. Um, and I make a little bit of money on that, not a ton. The discount codes that I have, I'll just put them all on the screen. I'll put the company, I'll put all the companies on this side. I'll put all the codes on this side. I'll put it on the screen right now. So screenshot that, I'll put it again so you can screenshot it. Screenshot this, you'll have all my discount codes, save you money on Quantum, sub six cents, the six cents super six box, which is a monthly subscription box and thmarinesplots.com. Once again, I'll put them on the screen right now. Screenshot that, save yourself on all of the brands. Down below, what is my go-to bait? That's a great question. I would say my go-to bait is gonna be a jig and probably a square bill crankbait. If I had to like, if I was going to a new place, I didn't know anything about it, I've definitely got a jig tied on. I definitely have a square bill crankbait tied on. Uh, the Six Cents 100X square bill. It's a little bit bigger than a 1.5. It's not exactly a 2.5. It's a super, super good crankbait. It also finds big ones pretty quick just because it's a little bit bigger, a little wider. I like that bait a lot. Uh, best tips for a high schooler to save money and fish on the side. Followed up with the question, should a high school angler buy a bass boat? The answer for that is no. A high school angler should not own a bass boat. I don't care if you got money or not, um, just save your money. Wait till you're out of school, you have a job, you have a couple thousand dollars saved to fall back on, then get a boat. Don't go in debt just to look cool for Instagram. If you don't have the money, don't buy the boat. Uh, find a friend who's got a boat, find a family member, go fishing with your buddies. You don't have to have a boat to learn how to fish. First part of it was how can a high schooler save money and fish on the side? Get a job, if you got a car, you should be work. If you have a car, you should be working to some extent. And now with social media, you can sell stuff online and not even have to have a car or leave your house. You can buy stuff on Facebook Marketplace, sell it on eBay, sell it on other places. Go to just there's a lot of things you can do to make money in 2019. Um, it's easy. You can easily find a way to make an extra thousand dollars a month. Uh, just by using your phone and selling stuff that's simple. Selling something on Facebook Marketplace or buying it from Facebook Marketplace, bargaining people down in price and then reselling it other places. A ton of money to be made there. Um, and the last question was, how can you afford a new boat? And with that, I'll kind of just talk about the finances of like what all I do. So one of the questions I that was asked earlier was, do you just live on YouTube or do you have other sources of income? I've kind of touched on it a little bit, but I want to kind of clear up like you see, like this is my shop and you see us at the house a little bit. I have uh, a, a nice used truck, heavily used truck, and I have a Ranger, it's a brand new one. I currently just sold it, but I've got another one on order. So I just looked it up a minute ago. My YouTube channel so far started in March. I've done 67 videos from March to November. Um, I made $3,400 in that amount of time. So average $50 a video, but that's heavily not accurate. Uh, I had a couple videos that went really huge. So that took up a lot of the money. Like that's where a lot of the money for my channel came from, but on average 50 bucks a video. So 50 bucks a video pays for the gas to get to the lake. And that pays for the gas while I'm on the lake and it pays for the snacks or whatever. I would say it probably costs $50 to make a YouTube video. So I'm at zero. Um, I have a couple paying sponsors. So YouTube right now for me is a small, like it's a small portion, uh, basically nothing of what I make. Um, now some of the sponsors help make up for that. And to kind of further break down like wh what I do and how I make money. I, here's me and I also I have Hannah too. Hannah has a job. She makes good money, not crazy great money. She didn't go to school to do what she does, but she gets paid well. So Hannah, me, um, the money that I make is the TH Marine salary, which is a regular salary. It's not a crazy ton of money. It's not a minimum wage job. It's just a middle of the road, good salary. Um, between those two things, Hannah's job, my TH job, we could live happily. 
do what we do, save some money, and have a lot of time to do other things, which is why I've heavily invested my time in the Outdoors Agency. The Outdoors Agency manages 17 different brands, social media accounts, content creation, posting on Facebook and Instagram, all these things the Outdoors Agency does, that is the ma well majority of the income that we make. I've grown that business, so the Outdoors Agency does around $150,000. Um, that is obviously the bulk of like what we do. And there's a lot of other things that goes into it. So I've got to pay photographers and there's a lot of other things that I do for the companies that cost that comes out of that money. So um, and then we also have the tea company. Currently the tea company does zero dollars. We have everything here. I still pay for the business. I still pay for the LLC. Um, but the tea company I believe has potential to be w a, a huge. I, I think the tea company has potential to be huge, but it's going to take a lot to invest into that. So the reason that we're saving money and doing all these other things is so we can invest back into the tea company so that it can make the most money. Hopefully that's the goal. And then, like I said earlier, we have uh, a high interest and we're about to like, we're looking into heavily right now, purchasing a, another piece of property to put on Airbnb or VRBO or, maybe find some like monthly tenants or whatever. So kind of looking into real estate, I don't know a lot about it, but um, I'm very excited about it because then you have what I was talking about earlier, five sources of income. That's not, that doesn't equate to me to a million dollars, but it's like, I think that with that, you're at least supporting yourself. You're stable and like whatever happens, I've got something to fall back on. Hannah's income, TH Marine, the Outdoors Agency, the tea companies at zero, real estate's at zero. But those two things are things we're dabbling in. I think real estate is a long-term game for me. I just want to have money. I, I don't want my money to be sitting in a savings account. I want it to be in real estate so that the property value goes up. Whatever happens, it goes up and have other people paying off that house. So it's a long-term game. It's, a, it's just something that I want to get into. I'm very intrigued with it. Um, and it kind of manages itself in a way. You can for a little bit of time and effort, you can make some money on it. So I'm excited about that. That's how we're able to do the things that we do. Uh, we have, we're obviously super blessed, but we work our ass off for this. We know that at any day, um, you know, we can have everything taken away from us. I know that if social media goes away for me, I don't really have a lot to fall back on. I don't, I didn't go to college. Like I said, I didn't go to college. Um, I, there's a lot of things that I'm not good at. I just, I just doubled down on what I was good at. So man, the social media stuff, the content creation, I'm creative. I knew that I can double down on that while social media is big and make a good living while that's big. But the scary thing is, I don't know if social media is going to last three more years, 20 more years, one more year. So that's the scary thing for me. But, um, I, I hope you have learned a little bit more about me, answered some of the questions that you guys had, and I appreciate all the questions. And don't just wait on a Q&A to ask questions. If you have any questions about me, feel free to shoot them to my email address, darianisfishing at gmail.com. I'll answer every single email until it gets obnoxious. Also, drop a comment down below, anything you've got, and I'll always try to answer them. I normally respond to the majority of comments I at least read all of them. If there's a question, I definitely try to answer it. Again, if you're looking for any discount codes, I've got plenty of them. TH Marine, Quantum, Six Sense Fishing. Uh, those guys are super awesome and have supported me, giving me codes to give to you guys to save money on fishing tackle, fishing equipment, and I'm super grateful for that. So that's gonna wrap up today's video. Thanks for everyone for all the support. My channel's growing like crazy. Remember, if I can get to 30,000 subscribers by Christmas, I'm gonna give away one year worth of six cents, super six boxes for one person. I'm gonna pay for it with my own money. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that a lot. So thanks guys, and I'll see you on the next one.